Hey there, everyone. Daniel Lowry from Anti-Siphon Training back with another flash challenge from Meta CTF. This one comes from February 2025, and it's called Better Eval. We're going to play around with a little, little Python, have a little fun with that, and then get that flag so we can solve this challenge. I actually have two methods for doing this for you. So maybe if you like one over the other, you got two ways of doing it. Should be a good time. Let's jump in the computer and see what's going on. Here is the actual challenge, better eval. It says, I just want to let people run Python code, but they keep trying to read the flag.txt file. What were they thinking? So I made a better eval that has filters to stop this. A lot of times we do think that filters will stop people from running things that they shouldn't, putting in strings that they shouldn't, special characters and that kind of stuff. And sometimes that's right, unless you're kind of crafty or you don't do your filtering. Filtering can be very difficult to do correctly. Not saying you shouldn't do it. It's just if you think that's the only thing that you should do, well, you're probably in for a bad time. We're about to see that happen right here. So let's get back to it. It says we can download the code here, which I've already done. We'll take a look at it here in a second. But you can click that link right around that region. And then we can connect to the remote instance by firing off this string right here, basically using netcat to go to this domain at this port. And if we, we have a backup, so that's nice. So it's telling us that we need to read flag.txt. So I'm assuming that that's going to be right there where I can read it. I don't have to go pathfinding for this thing. It's just going to be right there in, in the direct path of wherever we land in here. Well, let's actually kind of like go ahead and copy that. I'm going to jump over to my terminal. I'm going to paste that in. Let's go ahead and get connected. It says, enter your Python code. Well, I would assume that if I type in something like print, uh, well, like hello, it should do that. And it does. And it says print your Python code. Well, that's kind of cool, but also probably a little dangerous. And let's find out why. And that reason is, is this source code right here. We can see that there's a few things going on. Not too crazy. We only got, what, 16 lines of code total. And one of them is setting the environment, right? So 15 lines of code. Let's see what's going on. It starts off really with this while true statement. While true, we have this untrusted code variable and we take input from the user, prompting them, hey, enter your Python code. And that's where we saw this. Cool. And it's waiting for that input. Then that untrusted code is going to get kind of shoveled off to this better eval function, which is defined up here at the very top of our code. So we have def better eval. There's the function. And it slurps in that untrusted code. Cool. Now, here's where we get to the filtering. Blocked terms. This equals things like flag, the plus character, the import function, OS, eval, and exec. And there's a, there's a pretty decent filter to keep people from trying to run, quote unquote, dangerous Python for this little program, right? Then it gets into a for loop for term in block terms. If the term in untrusted code, so it's saying, hey, grab the first term in blocked terms, which is flag. If that term is in untrusted code, which it is, then print, hey, that term is filtered, then return. Okay, so basically it's going to kind of loop through each word that shows up in that untrusted code. If any of them meet these parameters, well, then it's going to tell us that it is a filtered thing and return. Then we get this try accept block. All right, cool. So try, if we make it past this, if we get past this little if statement, then we're going to hit this try block. And it says, hey, print out anything that you've evaled that comes from the entrusted code. So it is going to run an eval statement of anything that makes it through this part right here. So if we give it Python code, it should run it. If you try to do things like read the flag, it's going to tell you no. All right. And then if something goes wrong, that's what the accept is for and just tell us the error, whatever the error was. Straightforward, simple, little yellow different code. We love it. 
So our job is to get around that that lovely little filter, that blocked terms filter we've got. That's going to be the sticking point. That's going to be our, our thing to do. Now, we have a whole list of things that we know we can't do. Can't use flag, can't use plus to concatenate things. We can't import. We can't use OS. We can't use eval. We can't use exec. If I throw any of that stuff in here, it's going to go crazy. So if so I try to import OS, you can see that the term import is filtered. Wah, wah. Okay, so what do we do? What can we do to get around this? Well, one of the first things I would want to do is look at what variables are actually available to us. So you can do like globals and just throw that function at it, and it'll show us some of the things that are actually available, like built-ins. That's great. That lets us know that we still have access to certain things that are built in to the Python machine that we might be able to use, that we might find useful. I did a little pre-gaming before we started this to kind of make the, the flow go easy for us. But basically, this was a little bit of Google searching and looking at Python documentation and other things. Let's go take a look at what I found. And here are those built-in functions, right? You know, you'll, you'll find out real quick that one of them is globals, right? And you can click on this thing and it'll tell you, hey, return the dictionary implementing the current module namespace. For code within functions, it is set within the function, is defined, and remains the same regardless of where the function is called. Cool. We go back. Now we have a few of these to look through, but one of them that really caught my eye was this one, open, right? And now look at this, open, and what's it telling us? File. What mode? Read. Buffering, minus one. Okay, I maybe don't know what that is. We've got some encoding we can set. We can look at, do things with errors and new lines and close FD and opener, none. And it says right here, open file and return a corresponding file object. <laughs> well, isn't that what we're trying to do? Open a file? Hmm, wouldn't it be nice if all we have to do is say, hey, open, give it a file name and call it a day. Now, it's you would... We know it's not that easy, right? There are some things we have to do. You'll notice it does say that it is returning a corresponding file object, right? If you click on that and hit, there you go, right there. We can see that a file object is an object exposing a file-oriented API with methods such as read or write. Now, by default, it said that it was in read mode, but it doesn't actually call the read method. So we'd have to call that. We can chain these things together and call that actual read, and we should be able to hopefully, fingies crossed, read our flag. So that's what we're going to try to do. Let's jump back and see if we can make this happen. All right, where's my terminal here? Let's make sure. Oh, it looks like I got disconnected. No big deal. We just reconnect. I noticed that was something that happens. I think it's just trying to make sure that uh, you're not spending too much time doing nothing, right? So what we want to do is we want to try to open, and then we're going to open parentheses because that's calling that function, and then we're going to try to go after that flag. So we're going to say flag.txt. And if we close it out, we do dot .read. Give it that, and we file it off. Oh, it says, oh, that's right. Flag is a term that is filtered. We have to bypass the filter. So we don't really know whether or not this worked or not because we've got to do something about that flag operator, that flag word to get around this filter. Now, one of the most tried and true method is to either um, change or modify the actual word you're trying to use, but in a way that you can bring it back together that the, the machine will interpret as one string. Concatenation is typically a great way of doing that, but as we look and we remember, back over here in our code, we can't use that plus sign to concatenate. What do we do? Guess what? It's not the only game in town when it comes to being able to concatenate things within Python. So back... And we can see, I just did a little Google search, concatenate without plus sign in Python. I found this at tutorialspoint.com. Scroll down, it says, hey, you know what you should try to do? Is we've got this join method right here. I'll make this a little, a little bigger for us, right? We got this join method in Python. 
And you can see they make a string of welcome, another string of tutorials point, and then print string one, which should give you the first thing. And this print string two will give you the second thing. But if we want to concatenate it together, we can follow the join function. All right, cool. We like this. We're going to play around with this. Um, so it looks like we need to do a, well, it looks like a separator of some kind. So we've got a, 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 a white space character here, but we don't need any separation. We need it to bring it all together. So no big deal. We'll just make it blank. So we'll bring those two uh, double quotes together. Then we have dot join, open parentheses, and then a bracket with uh, string one and string two. Should make our lives pretty easy. Not too bad, right? Let's see what happens if we can make this join thing do what we think it should do. All right, back to the terminal. We're going to try open like so. Of course, we have to do the open parentheses there. And then remember, I'm just going to do two double parentheses and then dot join, which also has an open parentheses. And then if I remember correctly, a bracket that we need to take a look at. Now, from here, we got two different strings we're going to bring together. And I'm just going to break the word flag.txt up into two bits. FL separated by a comma, and then ag.txt, close my bracket, close my parentheses for join, close my parentheses for open, do dot read, give it, it's open and closing parentheses, we're not passing any options, but you'll need those, hit enter, an oh look, success, this is fun, right? Good times had by all. There's our flag. And it was all due to just a few little things that allowed us to bypass our little filtering option. We had the ability to do open because those built-ins were there. So without those built-ins, we would have been kind of stuck. We'd have been hosed, but they got to leave those built-ins because it was meant to run Python stuff. And then of course, getting around that whole concatenation thing, that was not too bad, right? Join really came and saved the day. Not the only game in town. There's another couple, there's another way I wanted to show you because I just thought this was cool and a lot of fun that we can make this happen. And that is by kind of following the same thing, there is a way to basically call, when, when we look or when we use Python to call that plus, when we use that plus operator in our Python code, it's actually calling for another operation under the hood, which is called add. I want to look that up for us too. So here's the operator, standard operators as functions. And if we look in here and we scroll down just a little bit, we start to see all these different capabilities like truth, is, is not. Oh, and there's one right there called add. So dot add. And I'm going to use the double under to make that happen. And then you give it something to add to. So I'm going to have whatever the operator is, dot double under add or dunder add, and then throw it a variable here or a, 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 a string, okay? And that should bring those two pieces together. Let's see if that works. Go back, we will reconnect and we will hit our open and then we will do FL, like just like before, where we're gonna kind of break up the word flag because we can use flag, we'll get hit by the by the filter. And then I'm going to do dot uh, double under add double under like so, and then give it the rest of it. ag.txt, finish it off, close my open, do dot read, and there it is, right? So just another fun way that I thought was cool to throw on top of the fire. Maybe give you some um, more insights to under the hood of what's going on inside of Python. And hopefully that increases your skills and abilities and knowledge, and you're able to solve the challenge. That said, thanks for watching and make sure to follow Anti-Siphon and MetaCTF. Go check out their YouTube. Definitely sign up for MetaCTF. Maybe you just kind of stumbled on this this video and you think this looks really cool, go to MetaCTF and check that out. Get logged in. It's totally free for you to be able to uh, get signed up for and can be a lot of fun. That said, thanks for watching. And until next time, have a great day.